This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. Nope. Yeah, yeah, this just is stop. a sham. <laughs> <laughs> it's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. Happy hump day, everybody. Oh, yeah. We made it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> stop staring at me. <laughs> Every time it's Wednesday and I see... I say hump day, I look at Lindsay and just smile comes across her face. She's all excited about it. I get too excited it. about simple bleep. I do too. I do too. I love it. All right, let's get to it. It took almost two years, but Kim K and Kanye West have settled their divorce. Kim will keep her $60 million home in Hidden Hills, as well as the home Kanye bought right next door. Kanye will keep his Malibu beach house, a pair of ranches in Wyoming, a home in Belgium, and his child home in Chicago. They have joint custody of their four kids but Kanye will pay Kim $200,000 a month in child support and will be responsible for half their school and security costs. Oh. Is this a good thing? We kind of got the paperwork done. This is what it is. You go your way, I go mine. Yeah, this is out of my tax bracket. Yeah. <laughs> I, know, yeah. I feel like they're both doing all right. Yeah, I'm like, oh, okay, so they're both still rich. Great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, for Let's a while, $200,000 a month. That's going to start to eat at you. Plus, I'm, I'm assuming the security is going to be at least another 100000 for the kids. Yeah. How old are they? I don't like, know. I feel like Kanye kind of manifested this. I think there was a whole song about it. <laughs> oh, he did. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anything, I would think, Lindsay, he would have to pay, if she would have to pay him. Doesn't she have more now, money? Well, people, now, people, but what if the court doc was settled before? He lost a couple bill. Yeah, well, lost that's a couple true. Bill. He lost, yeah. yeah, he's no longer the billionaire boys club. A lot of the online chatter is like, why does he need to pay this billionaire? And I'm like, I don't think everybody understands how L.A. works. If you get divorced, and I, I think, do. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, if you, so then you can break it down better than I can, yeah. but if you, that's pretty much like you're paying child support no matter what. Yeah. That's just how it goes. And since he's going to probably see the kids, I guess, as often as possible, he, they're still main residences with Kim. And I was trying to break it down to Colin. I'm like, I don't know that their daily, I mean, their monthly expenses don't exceed $200,000. Like, if you think about it, they fly oh, private and they're traveling a lot. All these things, her oh, house yeah. mortgage is probably very expensive. Like, who knows what their bills they've created for themselves. It might actually be $400,000, and that, that might actually be an even split. Like, I'm not sure, but their life is not um, scaled back in any way. Uh, well, you know what? This is a weird question, but all those properties that I just named for both of them, what's the landscaping bill a month oh, on all those? Just to you like... don't think he mows the lawn? <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't, the, yeah. Huge properties keeping the bushes tight, grass tight, all that. It's, yeah. uh, and this is a couple that had a prenup in place. You know, I I had, you know, I made the joke about uh, going through a divorce in L.A., which I did, and my wife was wonderful during it, thank God. But, you know, it, what you realize when you get into the divorce process is how just cold and sterile it is. You think, like, when you're going to get divorced, you're like, yeah, and then Erica did this, and I did and they're like, we don't care. It's a math problem. Jeff, what do you make? What does your ex make? Well, they add it up, and it's just, it's so sterile and boring, because they don't have time to listen to you, like, and then he took, like, wow. they don't have time for that. <laughs> And everybody thinks they're going to be able to sell their story and, like, here's why I need more money. And unless you, like, have a lawyer that's going to drag it out to try and get more money, usually both parties quickly realize that, like, we need to get this settled because it becomes very expensive for regular folks. People are doing well. And people that you would look at and say, oh, they're doing really well, it'll still drain anybody. That's kind of what the process is about. So it's yeah, not like, it's set up that way. Yes. It's not like wedding crashers where they're cracking jokes at the no, hearing. No. Yeah, yeah I had this whole distorted reality of what that might look like. Like, first of all that's it's, what I was it's thinking like you're like gonna stand up and like open your briefcase yeah, yeah like you're not, you know I like to do not. research there'll like be no all. briefcases there'll be no nothing it'll be you on the laptop yeah and paying a whole lot of money to attorneys who are Ugh. happily ready to yeah. receive oh, yes. it yes oh yeah. Erica we need to send one more 175 dollar mm -hmm. fax to make sure that Schroeder starts with an s and not a c so oh, when we get that back that'll be 175 dollars for me to look at it's it's oh, a I don't scam. like the sound of that. It I is a scam. I don't like the sound of that. All right. Can you believe it's been almost 20 years since the movie Love actually came out? So last night, Diane Sawyer spoke with some of the cast about making the film. The British film followed inter uh, interwoven love stories of multiple characters. At the time, it was a modest box office hit, but since became a global Christmas classic. The special aired footage of the first table read with the cast like Laura Linney and Hugh Grant and relatively unknown Kira Knightley at the time. Hugh also revealed he hated doing the iconic dance scene and that his timing was a bit off. It looks all right, buddy. Emma Thompson <laughs> said after the screening, Hugh didn't know what to make of the film. Let's watch. Hugh. 
came up behind me as we were walking out and said, correct me if I'm wrong, but is that the most psychotic thing we've ever been in? <laughs> I just thought, what's he talking about? Did I say that? <laughs> well, it is a bit psychotic. So as much as the movie is love, director and writer Richard Curtis said, looking back, the film's lack of diversity makes him feel uncomfortable and a bit stupid. There are also some romances between bosses and their employees oh, that would gosh. be problematic today. Enough with this. <laughs> Can we enjoy anything? Do you understand that in 10 years, everything that we like yeah. right now will be problematic? Every single thing. Look at just uh, the NFL, like the hits that you, you could do 10 years ago that are totally outlawed now. Everything is like that. And like, I feel like it's like a concerted effort to go back and anything that people liked, we pick it apart with today's lenses and it, you can do that for everything. It's boring and it's just like, it seems like it spreads sadness, Lindsay. Well, first, I got to admit, I've never seen Love, actually. Yep, so that's that a, like a diversity. party foul. <laughs> like diversity. But also, I It probably is, right? Yeah. That's probably the truth. Well, yeah. I mean, like, even if you think about, like, Sex and the City, I didn't look at that as four white ladies in an all-white Manhattan. I just saw ladies having girl issues and problems that I have with my friends and that, you know, was funny and entertaining. But when you t think about it in today's perspective, you're like, wait, this is the most diverse, one of the most diverse cities in the country. Where are all yeah. the different races that exist in every single space that you go to? Right. Right. And so I think when you're talking about London, that's also another extremely diverse place, right? Is that where this movie? Yeah, this is. Let's, let's bring the Brits for this. This is their yeah, film. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> America's like, fine during this time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think acknowledging as the director who has a lot of power, if not the most power in the movie, like, come on, you got to like look around a little bit more. And he's just acknowledging that he was in his little bubble yeah. and thinking that was appropriate. Like, you know, men relationships, you might have joked about it, like a boss might have hit on somebody. And maybe the, with no party foul, like the person didn't mind. But now we live in a place where so many people have been offended by those actions, we can no longer even play like that. Right. Or have a Christmas party. Right. But right. Yes. I mean, it's true. Christmas, yeah. that, those, that's for different reasons, Jeff. Yes. Different reasons. <laughs> different reasons. Put it on the list. Exactly. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Um, Love, actually, I watched um, when my mom was going through chemo. And the thing about it was that we, she would like fall asleep or I would fall asleep. So we watched it every single time she had to go through chemo. Wow. And so when I think of that movie, that's what I think about the fact that, you know, oh. that's where we were then. And, you know, she's cancer free for over a decade at this yeah. point. And so, yeah, like that I, is beautiful. Yes, yes it, it is. Like I probably wouldn't have ever watched it, but it was something that was available in that hospital. And we were like, well, let's watch it. And they were like, what's up? What part did you see? <laughs> <laughs> right. It was a good movie to make you fall asleep. Great endorsement. All right. So Dwayne The Rock Johnson is trying to right the wrongs of his past. He recently visited a 7-Eleven store in Hawaii where he grew up in in order to buy. He, he ordered to buy all up all the Snickers bar. He bought up all the Snickers. Watch. <laughs> I was 14 years old. Every day I used to stop here at this 7-Eleven and steal a king size Snicker bar because I couldn't afford to buy one. That was my pre-workout food. I did that for almost a year every day. I had to come back and buy every Snickers bar on those shelves. He also they, need to pay the money owed from the stolen Snickers bar. <laughs> I think he did give a little extra, but the total Snickers was like 280 or something? 298. 298. Come on, Rock. Yeah, come yeah, on, come on. you could have spent him at least a thousand bucks. Come on, I think you're doing <laughs> yeah. pretty okay. I will say this, I don't know if anybody's been to a 7-Eleven in Hawaii, but they have the best sushi there. What? So good. They have the best uh, sushi everywhere. Poke? Yeah. The Hawaiian poke? Yeah. It, it, like, everywhere. It's 7 Eleven. Like, it's legit. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, I was like, what? But then I'm like, well, you are on an island. Right. So the it's, fish is right there. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Strange. Better than a 7 Eleven hot dog here. Disgusting. Mmm. You what? like that? Wait, you eat yeah, that? I don't eat 7 Eleven hot dogs. Oh, I thought you were like questioning it. No, but there yeah. are gas stations that do have good food. Yeah. Home Depot hot dogs is where it's at. Boom. Yeah. Wait, Speaking you, my language. Yes. You mean uh, Costco? No, Costco Home Depot. Home Depot out Home when they Depot grill, had, uh, but yeah. they get the brats or the hot dogs. Oh, we gotta go, gotta but I can talk about this all day. Yes. Yeah. We're doing a special on brats. Uh, <laughs> our interview with John Candy's daughter, Jennifer, she's telling us all about her dad's new documentary, and Kourtney Kardashian is getting slammed for the way she treated Scott Disick. Tori is breaking it all down in her segment, Um, Actually.
there's going to be a lot of internet chatter. Mm -hmm. That's where the red flag goes up. We are never going really? to agree on this. No. It's ignorant. And for me, it was just like a damn shame. Tell me I need to do something. I'm going to do the exact opposite. You know why I don't call in sick? Camera hog. Never in my life. Okay. I don't know. Okay. We have a couple different things going on because it's the 30th anniversary of Thriller, which is a big deal. 40th. 40th. Wow. 40. Makes you feel old, huh? Yeah, I was shocked to find out only nine albums on that. Mm -hmm. uh, nine, nine tracks on that That's album. crazy. Way to break it down, Al. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <the first> <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about our conversation yesterday about how people separate so the many artists. times the artists from whatever they're uh, accused of. And then I thought about what Erica just said about her mom going through chemo and her watching that movie specifically. And I thought about this morning, my experience of Thriller was my childhood. Like my right. parents loved it so much and I was a dancing kid. Right. So it, it brings back so much joy that I have to separate from the artist. And, and I think that I can't do that because to me, it only reminds me of being a little kid and having and the best the fun And also the joy you saw parties. your parents have right. listening to that and dancing and your parents dancing in the kitchen and all these good memories you're making. Who and didn't have that album? Record. Uh, right. actual the record. actual right. record, yeah. yeah. And it's like, you know, I, that, that was what I was saying, uh, not in defense of R. Kelly, but with people having difficulty canceling him or not going. Well, some people's because, wedding song. Right, you know, people, yeah. some people's like, this is the last time I saw my grandmother yeah. dance was to this Step song. Step in the name of love Yeah, or and it's like, yeah. it's just yeah. hard to okay, cool. disassociate that because there's so much emotion tied in with music and And, and it can't movies. be like just selective, so we have to cancel all the movie producers that have been accused of things. We have to, you know, we have to go through everybody then. We can't just like selectively pick people. It's oh, music. are we taking out the clergy too? Are we taking out the church? And Dre, we're gonna start is, there. Yeah. Dre, Dre is making that fine. Bye. He's like, yeah, there we go. Well, there's a, you know, it's, you can't, oh, I, and God. it kind of goes back to our story. You can't go back and rewrite history. Welcome back. The theme for this week is eagle-eyed Kardashian keeper uppers and what they've spotted in the hills of Calabasas. But um, actually, are these claims even true? First sister in the hot seat, Miss Courtney. She's being slammed for her disgusting treatment of Scott after he said he wanted to reconnect with his Jewish heritage. Scott put on a yarmulke and Courtney responded saying this. You're gonna wear it for five minutes. There's no way that Scott is gonna risk messing up his hair and wearing this yarmulke. <laughs> he might wear it one time and I guarantee never again. Um, actually, this clip, first of all, is from 2011, when their show would find any reason to create drama, like this scene from the same year. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry, my God. If she was genuinely shading Scott for wanting to reconnect with his Jewish faith, well, let's just hope Kanye doesn't get a hold of the headline. Hey But it seems like Scott wasn't too phased because in the old episode, he ended up going to Temple. Shalom, Scott. Shalom. Next sister up, Kylie. Other eagle-eyed fans are accusing Kylie of some odd mom behavior. The accusations come after fans notice that Kylie regularly posts pics and videos of her daughter Stormy, but keeps her son's face hidden. Now, maybe her logic is if her son is nameless to the public, he may as well be faceless too. Or maybe PR mastermind momager Kris Jenner has her own strategic reasoning. But um, actually, even though it's unclear why she hides her son, we the viewers have learned that we shouldn't question a mama bear's intuition, even when her cub is a wolf. <laughs> Oh, and while we're on the topic of people slamming Kylie, she's also being called obnoxious due to her over-the-top Christmas tree and decorations. You clearly aren't keeping up with the Kardashians very well if you're unaware that all of the sisters have always had extravagant over-the-top Christmas decor. And how come when Clark Griswold does it, it's fine, but not when Kylie Jenner does it? Uh -huh. I mean, she has a mansion and like a 100-foot ceiling, so this wouldn't happen. That's all for this week. We'll be right back. <laughs> When you
When you have a cold, you'll do almost anything to relieve the pressure in your head, the scratch in your throat, and just feel better. Sometimes that means turning to old family cures, or even YouTube. Verify viewer Michelle and several others emailed us to ask whether leaving a raw, cut onion in a room can cure a cold. A similar version in blog posts and YouTube videos claims wearing a sock with an onion slice overnight can cleanse your body and help you get better. So let's verify. Can placing raw onions in your house or on your skin cure a cold or flu? Our sources are Providence Health and Services, the National Onion Association, and Bawalia Lungu, a food science professor with the University of California, Davis. If you've ever cut an onion, then you know tears are bound to follow as enzymes are released into the air that irritates our eyes. Centuries ago, during the bubonic plague, our sources say people thought that reaction was the air being purified, and that would help keep them healthy. I guess they were thinking that smell is going to help um, clear or clean out the environment. But again, um, you know, it, 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 life doesn't work like that. Similarly, Lungu says some modern Chinese medicine practitioners falsely claim an onion's purifying properties can be absorbed through the feet. The body doesn't absorb compounds or nutrients and send them to um, major internal organs that way. Lungu points out there is no evidence that proves any of these methods work to treat an illness. So, no, placing raw onions in your house or on your skin cannot cure a cold. Onions do have important prebiotics that can strengthen your body's immune system, but our sources say to get those benefits, you'd need to eat the onions, not put them on your skin or in your home. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis for CBS 8. Welcome back to DBL. He always knew how to make us laugh, and with a new documentary in the works, John Candy is back in the spotlight. Earlier, we spoke with his daughter, Jennifer, but first, here's a look at the legacy of her famous dad. Oh, that feels good. Oh, God, I'm telling you. My dogs are barking today. Oh. When you hear the name John Candy, what words come to mind? Everyone knows he was funny. Honey, he's waving. Oh, oh, oh he oh, he's gone. Oh, he's gone. Oh, all right. All right, great. Whoa. But how about lovable? Where do you live? In the city. Do you have a house? Apartment. On a rent? Rent. What do you do for a living? Lots of things. Where's your office? I don't have one. How come? I don't need one. Where's your wife? Don't have one. How come? It's a long story. Do you have kids? No, I don't. How come? It's an even longer story. Or maybe honest. A gold medal is a wonderful thing. But if you're not enough without it, You'll never be enough with it. What about humble? You know what your problem is? You're in love with this girl and you're trying to convince yourself you're not. And how about legendary? Just a figment of my imagination. The cat's still in you. The oyster's shucking you, I told him. You got the right top top, but the wrong whole hole. Butrin is not sharp. Scout's on it. And you can tell him I said so. Asking anyone to pin down your favorite John Candy movie is a difficult feat. Well, I went to this doctor. And well, he told me I, I swallowed a lot of aggression, along with a lot of pizzas. <laughs> pizzas. But there's one thing we can all agree on. He left us too soon. Good evening. Some stories we're following. Tributes pour in for one of Canada's most famous entertainers. John Candy is dead at the age of 43. Candy was in Mexico working on a movie. He died of a heart attack. We all love your dad. It kind of got us a little yeah. emotional just watching all those great <laughs> clips. But your dad said his iconic Uncle Buck character was actually based on him as a dad. What parts of that role are actually your dad that you remember? Oh, it's a combination. I feel like it's the, the, the fun-loving kind of jokester all the time, but then the very serious dad you know it was kind of like you know don't mess around or you know do this do that um in a good way like it was kind of the balance but he just oh he was just he was fun he was just a, you know he was your fun dad to have Aww. he was that guy that we saw in the movies right yeah. ever making you laugh yeah. all the time and everyone around him but then just always just you know calm and and mellow and you know just having just 
living his best life and kind of being very family oriented and making sure that we're all kind of like stay grounded and that we're just, you know, doing family things, you know, when he's home because he always had to go away for work and then he always, you know, brought us along with him and then vice, you know, when he was home, he was home and he was present, which was always, you know, that was, I think, a Father's Day or we were train planes and automobiles with the mustache and the perm and <laughs> oh, wow. he's not on family vacations. It was fun. Wow. That's amazing. But Jennifer, you've been so transparent about uh, the life and death of your father, which I mean, is yeah. such a gift to us um, as fans. So what do you remember about the day that your father passed? I do you know what? As weird as it is, I remember I was studying for a vocabulary test in school and I remember, you know, the day before studying, talking to my dad on the phone and then waking up the next day worried about tests at school and all that and then getting pulled out of class mm. moments before I had to take this test and them not saying anything um, it was the principal and then going to get my brother from his class which was like he was a couple years younger than me and then going um, to the rectory um, and where my mom was and then they told us and then I just broke down crying and then I sat down and then I stopped crying for a while um, because I just couldn't process all of it. And it was just a very weird, mind numbing day. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's a wow. perfect way to put it. My, well, the day my father passed away, I kind of knew, so I had to tell people, and it's weird, you kind of snap into this other mode where you're just like making calls and being efficient because you don't even allow yourself the time to process because there's so many <laughs> things going on. So it takes a while. It takes a while to process it. I think it still takes how many or however old I'm now. It's like it's you're always processing. That's right. Well, I mean, it continues on the legacy and your son Finley, uh, you know, he didn't get yeah. a chance to know his grandfather. So what do you tell him about his grandpa, John? We've got a picture um, in our house that's um, a, a painting or a drawing of Barf from Spaceballs. Yes. And it's at the bottom of our stairs. And Aww. he, oh, he knows, there it is. Uh, that's his favorite painting. And Aww. we tell him, you know, he, he says goodnight to grandpa. Um, and he gives, pretends to give it a hug or gives it a hug. Um, so he knows that that's his grandpa. Um, and he knows that grandpa's not around. So he, he sometimes goes, he goes, grandpa, go bye-bye. I said, yes, grandpa, grandpa, go bye-bye. But you know that this is your grandpa. And he, you know, he at school, he had a Dia de los Muertos and he brought in that picture. Oh, and he was oh showing gosh. it to all his kids at school. So it I, was cute. I oh. love that. And in, in October, keeping the legacy alive, Ryan Reynolds revealed that he and Colin Colin Hanks are working on a documentary about your dad. You and your brother have been going through old footage and photos of your dad for it. Was there one memory that you loved reliving when you saw it? Reliving our birthday parties, which was kind of surreal. Wow. Um, and just our dad being the host and my mom being the host and them interacting with people. And it was just kind of this weird, it takes you back to that time of your birthdays. And it was fun and I just, I loved seeing all those that footage what it's like home it's home movies yeah what a gift thank you for sharing yeah, your dad you. with us uh you can follow jennifer on instagram to get the latest on her current projects along with updates on her dad's documentary also get into the holiday spirit by helping jennifer with a project near and dear to her it's called letters to santa it's a 24-hour improv and music benefit show on december 19th in chicago you can visit 24hourmarathon.org for more info jennifer Thank you. Thank we'll be you right so back. Thank Thanks, you. Jennifer. Thanks, guys. If you ever swallowed your gum, chances are someone told you it would be stuck in your stomach for the next seven years. Many Verify readers told us this was a food legend they were curious about. So let's pop this bubble once and for all. Does gum really take seven years to digest? We asked these sources to chew on that question, and they all agree. The seven-year claim is a myth. On average, it takes two to five days from the time you swallow something to the time it leaves your body. That timeline is the same for gum, but your body digests gum differently than most foods, which is probably where this legend got gummed up. Let me explain using a banana as an example, which according to the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, digests pretty easily. Chewing helps the banana break down into smaller pieces, so it's easier to digest. When it gets to your stomach, acid breaks down the banana pieces further into what's called slurry. Then, in the small intestine, enzymes act upon that slurry to absorb the banana's nutrients. Anything left in the small intestine when the slurry passes into the large intestine exits the body through your stool. But gum, which has a rubber base, stays mostly intact throughout the digestion process, according to Dr. Walia Lungu. The body doesn't produce any enzymes to break down um, the gum. 
And so anything after the small intestine that passes into the large intestine is just passed out in stool. Gastroenterologist Dr. Nancy McGreal says gums movement through the body is similar to the fiber base of raw veggies, corn, and seeds, which also stay intact because the body lacks the enzymes to break them down. So we can verify, no, gum does not take seven years to digest. After a few days, it gets flushed out of your system, just like basically every other food we eat. With your Verify, I'm Ariande Till. Japanese soccer fans were elated when their team beat Germany last week in their first game of the FIFA World Cup. Four days later, a video posted to Twitter that now has 5 million views claims the fans intentionally trashed the stadium by taking rubbish out of bags and planting it in the stadium. So let's verify. Were Japanese fans spreading trash in a World Cup stadium? Our sources are Qatar's Alcast Sports Channel, a reverse image search using Revi, and an analysis using the video forensics tool, Invid. Verify analyzed keyframes from the viral video using Invid. We then used the frames to do a reverse image search. This led us to Alcast's Twitter account. Alcast is a licensed broadcaster of the FIFA World Cup, and on November 23rd, it posted a clip from its coverage. It included a caption, which is written in Arabic, that says, despite the victory over Germany, Japanese fans do not forget their traditions after the end of the match. The video shows Japanese fans walking through the stadium and putting trash into their bags after the game. If you play the viral video, you can see it's the original clip playing in reverse. The viral video also shows people walking backwards. So no, Japanese fans were not spreading trash in a World Cup stadium. The viral video was manipulated to play in reverse and several people shamed the poster for editing the video. Japan's coach told the Associated Press that it's part of their culture for fans to help clean up after matches. And the Japan Football Association said it supplied 8,000 trash bags to support them. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Are you someone who finds the winter season painful? If the answer is yes, you're not alone. It's time for some joint and muscle support brought to you by Omega XL. It's common for many people to feel pain in their knees, fingers, and shoulders when the temperature drops. In the winter, our exposure to the sun significantly decreases. This means less vitamin D, which keeps joints, bones, and muscles healthy. So make sure you're getting in the sun. And working out will prevent pain in your joints by enhancing blood flow and joint lubrication. Just don't forget to warm up your body first. Omega XL has improved the lives of millions of consumers supported by 30 years of clinical research. Omega, <clears throat> Omega XL's powerful and proven <laughs> benefits have transformed the lives of athletes, celebrities, and dedicated daily users. Call 1-800-686-5325 or visit OmegaXL.com for more information. Now we're getting old, but you got to warm up first for it, sure. That's, uh, I used to, I remember being like, 15 years old and looking at old guys stretching. I'm like, why would you stretch before a basketball game? Just start playing. It'll be fine. And now it's like, I need 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> 30. Give me 30. 30 minutes after. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow.